today we are going to learn about pathological fractures. So first we need to define a pathological fracture. Any invasive disease or destructive process which compromise the normal integrity and strength of the bone. If in such bone any fracture occurs it is called a pathological fracture. The causes include any neoplasm, necrosis, metabolic bone diseases, infection, osteoporosis. So among these, the neoplasm or the malignancy will cause weakening of the bone if there is a metastasis or if there is a primary malignancy at the site necrosis of bone due to any reason metabolic bone diseases also weaken the bone infection also leads to weakening of the bone and osteoporosis by decreasing the bone content also leads to pathological fractures some of the benign lesions which cause pathological fractures are unicameral bone cyst non-ossifying fibromas, fibrous dysplasias and eosinophilic granulomas while the malignant ones are osteosarcoma, chondrosarcoma, radiation induced necrosis of the bone as seen in Ewing's sarcoma and lymphoma metastasis. What is the mechanism of injury? The mechanism of injury is trivial trauma. This means that the amount of fracture or the level of fracture that has occurred will not correlate with the intensity of trauma. For example, we do not see shaft of femur fractures on falling down from a standing position in young patients. But if a fracture occurs in a young patient after falling down from a standing height, then it creates a suspicion of a pathological fracture. What are the clinical features which will guide towards a pathological fracture? We have already talked about history of trivial trauma. There can be a history of pain in the region prior to. The patient will say that I had some amount of pain even before the injury in that region. There can be a history of known malignancy in the patient or a metabolic disease history in the patient and there is often history of multiple fractures in these patients. Suppose if there is a fracture and we cannot find the malignancy from which the metastatic deposit has come, we should take a thorough head to toe history and examination in the patients to find out the root cause and the primary malignancy in the neck we can we can ask history which is particular to find a thyroid nodule we can look for lymph nodes in the neck in the chest we should look for a breast mass even in the male patients and we should look for respiratory examination to find out if there is any abnormality in the lungs. In the abdomen, pelvis, we can ask history pertaining to prostate, renal and history and examination of gastrointestinal system. We should also look for other sites for bony tenderness to find out an impending fracture in the other bones. What investigations will you order in such patients? So, we should perform a routine complete blood count, ESR, CRP to look for infections, LFT or liver function tests and a kidney function test to look if there is an involvement of these organs. We should perform a proper urine analysis along with electrophoresis of blood and urine to look for M-band 
to find out if there is an underlying multiple myeloma. We can do a carcinoembryonic antigen CEA, prostate specific antigen, parathyroid hormone levels, a thyroid function test can be done and stool for occult blood should be tested. In radiological examination, we should perform a detailed part x-ray where the fracture has occurred. We should get a skeletal survey of the patient to look for involvement of other bones also. We can get a CT scan or MRI done of the part to look for bony involvement and soft tissue involvement. We should routinely get a PET scan done in these patients. If the PET scan is not available, we can do a CECT neck, chest, abdomen and pelvis to find out the primary malignancy and in females, a mammography should be done to look if there is a underlying breast cancer. So there is a classification called Springfield which divides the causes into systemic and local causes. In the systemic causes there is osteoporosis, metabolic bone diseases and Paget's disease. In the local causes, there can be a primary malignancy, there can be a metastasis, a secondary, and there can be a problem in the hematopoiesis and can be a hematopoietic disorder. The metabolic bone diseases can be osteomalacia, hyperparathyroidism, and renal osteodystrophy. That is secondary changes in bone after a renal failure. Hematopoietic disorders can be a myeloma, can be a lymphoma and can be a leukemia. The metabolic causes can be divided into correctable and non-correctable types. Among the correctable ones, there is osteomalacia, diffuse osteoporosis, hyper parathyroidism, renal osteodystrophy and steroid induced osteopenia. In the non-correctable ones, we have osteogenesis imperfecta, we have polyosteotic fibrous dysplasia, we can have osteopetrosis and pagets, rheumatoid arthritis and Gaucher's disease. Other miscellaneous disorders can be an irradiated bone, congenital pseudoarthrosis or there can be a localized structural defect. So now we are going to discuss the treatment of these fractures. First and foremost we should do a reduction and immobilization until we find out the pathological process and treat it. This is done in the metabolic lesions. In the benign lesions, we go for a conservative management because most of them heal after a fracture. If we just reduce and immobilize the limb, we will discuss the management of a malignant lesion which has led to pathological fracture. So most of these fractures require an operative treatment which helps in mechanical support of the part which is fractured, pain relief. Both of these decreases the dependency of the patient with malignancy over the caregivers. In the malignant tumors causing a pathological fracture, the operative treatment can be an internal fixation with or without cementing using a plate or a nail or a resection is performed with prosthesis placement of the missing part. 
that has been removed due to tumor what are the contraindications to surgery in these patients it is poor general condition and if the life expectancy is very short so the treatment revolves around taking a biopsy internal fixation or arthroplasty with or without cement radiation or chemotherapy and finally rehabilitation of the patient to improve his life radiation and chemotherapy helps in decreasing the size of the lesion to make it more resectable but there is a negative aspect also that it delays healing of the wound after surgery we will be discussing different bones in which if, if a pathological fracture takes place what should be the line of management in the pathological fractures of femur the indications of fixation are if there is a cortex destruction of more than equal to 50% if the lesion size is more than equal to 2.5 cm if there is avulsion of lesser trochanter if there is pain which is persistent even after irradiation of the bone in the pathological fractures of humerus the surgery is only performed to decrease pain and to decrease the dependence on nursing care and prophylactic fixation of these fractures is not recommended in pathological fractures of spine we look for a decreased height of the vertebral body and a focal neurological deficit if both are absent then only irradiation of the bone is done and no surgical intervention is performed if only the height is decreased and there is no focal neurological deficit then we go for a vertebroplasty if there is a focal neurological deficit then decompression of the spinal cord is essential the spine is internally fixed with pedicle screws there is an important criteria called mirrell's criteria which helps us in determining whether we should perform an operative intervention and fixation in a pathological fracture or not we have to give a score of 1 2 and 3 depending upon the variable first is site of the pathological fracture if it is in upper limb lower limb or pertrochanteric region second is pain whether it is mild moderate or severe it is a subjective finding and depends upon the patient and the next is what type of lesion is it if it is a bone forming blastic whether it is a mixed type or a lytic type of lesion and finally the size of the lesion compared to its the diameter of the bone whether it is less than 1/3 1/3 to 2/3 or more than 2/3 of the diameter if the mirrell score comes out to be less than or equal to 7 then only irradiation of bone is done if the score is more than equal to 8 then fixation of the fracture has to be performed